the mayor may revise, I thought was um, really responsive to the council's concerns. You know, we raised a number of issues uh, uh, relative to one-time uses, uh, um, you know, funding priorities, and, and uh, he responded to that. There's still work to be done. That's the natural give and take in this process, but I thought the May Revise was uh, a step in the right direction. You know, the budget problem is complex, you know, and I think sometimes there's a desire to say, well, you know, I run my household budget a particular way, the city budget should operate similarly. And, you know, I, I understand the thought behind that. The reality is the complexities of what we deal with, uh, with you know, state law, local labor relation law, and other things um, really drive some of these conversations. Um, but ultimately, I think what you have, particularly with this council, are people who are willing to come to the center to, you know, try and achieve something that's in the greater good of the city. Uh, you saw that with our labor pack. Uh, uh, that was announced earlier this week, uh, you know, folks really coming to the center to achieve something. I think we'll see something similar with the city's budget when we had finally adopt it, hopefully on June 10th. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it isn't quite as easy as just moving from one thing to another. Um, I think one of the things that people are often surprised by is when you think about the city's overall budget of roughly $3 billion, you know, that really only about a billion of that is our general fund, which is the most flexible funds, right? And so, you know, immediately two-thirds of, of what's available to us just isn't flexible, uh, and rightfully so. I mean, ratepayer funds should be protected and used only for uh, ratepayer uh, uh, needs. Uh, however, uh, it, it shows how limited we are in some of the discretionary decisions that we have to make, and that you really do come down to arguing over 100000 here, 200000 there, all of it real money, um, but uh, not of the magnitude and that's necessary. And I think really probably the bigger thing that we're really trying to drive home, and uh, with the help of our independent budget analysts, with our statement on budgetary principles, to not sign up for long-term costs without an understanding of how we're going to pay for it. That's some of the stuff that we got into trouble before, and I don't think any council member wants to add library hours back at a particular branch only to take them away the next year. And that's one of the difficulties that, you know, yeah, okay, so we're working with a, with a modest surplus right now. Um, however, uh, that is not necessarily the case next year, uh, and that we have to be really judicious um, and, and hopefully allow every neighborhood uh, to benefit. You know, it's, it's about making sure that we're being pretty equitable. We've done that last year when we added five hours every branch library in the city. That was the right approach, and we want to continue in that similar vein going forward. I would encourage people to use the tool. I mean, it gives you a sense of the kinds of the trade-offs that we have. You know, do you prioritize tree trimming or, or fire response or community plans? I mean, there's so many needs uh, in a city that our size. Um, we can never satisfy all of them, but our hope is that we can satisfy a majority of them and just keep the city moving in a forward direction. And that's certainly my goal as the council president and the chair of the budget committee.